Uh, hi, my name is Jeff Jefferson. And I'm Kathy Catherson, and that's Kathy with a K, despite what our idiot graphic designer wrote. <laughs> Wait, I'm the graphic designer. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, uh, that's besides the point. Uh, today I want to talk about what we've been doing during our quarantine. Oh, yeah. So, Kathy, what have you been doing? <laughs> well, uh, I work from home, so... Yeah. I've been doing that. And in the evenings, I've been working on a project that requires a lot of my energy, my time, my patience. It's pretty exhausting. Yeah, you're involved with those uh, Comedy Wham shows, right? Oh, no, I've been spending evenings with you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can I talk about uh, what I've been doing? Fine, go ahead. I've been playing video games, I've been doing my online schoolwork, and I've been doing cooking, which I'm pretty proud of. Do you call what you've been doing cooking, huh? Is something <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, a penny on the ground! <laughs> you don't like my saganaki? Wait, what's saganaki again? It's the flaming Greek cheese. Oh, you mean the thing that nearly burned down our house? Uh, I took a lot of precautions. I took a fire safety class. I wore a fire suit. I had the fire departments waiting outside our door. And I alerted the National Guard of a potential threat to the nation. Yeah, but did you contact our insurance agent to tell him about the increased risk? No, but did you at least enjoy the spinach souffle, beef wellington, and uh, baked Alaska? I mean, I guess they tasted okay, but it's not like those are hard to make. <laughs> I'm going to think Miss Carrington is the only sane person in our house. I'm forgetting. There was something else I've been doing. I can't remember what it is. Hmm. Uh, I know one thing that you've been doing a lot of. What? Spending too much time near me. <laughs> but what you don't do enough of is the household chores. What? I dust, I vacuum, I do the laundry, I even fix things around the house. Yeah, but you don't iron the linens like I always ask you to. People only did that in the 1800s. <laughs> I'm old. No, I'm just saying only people born in the 1800s want their linens ironed. <sighs> And another thing you're not doing is getting us more groceries. We're almost out of food. I can't drive. And there's no one available for delivery. Oh, I have an idea. I'll be right back. She's making me sleep on the patio. Please help. Help. Look, our cat's fat enough. Why don't you eat we eat her? Maybe you can use one of your fancy recipes and make beef purrington. Is that a great idea? I remember what I wanted to say. Okay. <laughs> uh, exercising. Uh, I, and I've also been uh, swimming laps in my bathtub because uh, swim practice is shut down, but it's pretty difficult. Oh, but yeah, of course it's difficult. What do you mean? Well, I mean... What? Oh. Look. <laughs> what? You're fat! Oh. <laughs> I guess that's the end of the Jeff and Kathy Chit Chat Show. It's the Jeff, Jeff and Kathy Chit Chat Show. 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 Show. <laughs> and now, welcome your host, Gabby. Oh, <laughs> well, Gabby, <laughs> not my <laughs>
tonight. Uh, we've got a hell of a good show for y'all. We've got comics from all over, uh, from California to Mississippi, uh, and places in between there too. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be a great show. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Um, it's gonna get real hype in your house. Grab a drink. I'm on my second margarita, uh, and there will be more to come. It's gonna be real nice. <laughs> um, I, uh, I've been trying to meditate a little bit lately. I've been stressed. There's um, some stuff happening in the world that's stressing me out. So I've been trying to meditate lately. Uh, and I was listening to this kind of like weird like, like meditation app on Spotify. Like I know that there's the fancy ones like 10% happier or the Calm app, but um, those cost money and I was doing the free one. And I don't know if they're just sourcing some weird talent pools for these meditation people, but the girl that was doing this guided sleep meditation, um, it just was sounding really dirty to me. When I was listening to her, she would just talk about like all kinds of things like, I want to see you relax and just feel the calming ripples. And I'm like, what the fuck are calming ripples? <laughs> and she would just kept telling you over and over like, I want you to be so relaxed that your jaw goes slack. What? What? <laughs> Where are we? What are we doing? Uh, it. Honestly, there was even a point, like I wrote this down and this note is 3.33 in the morning, but there was even a point where like, she was talking about these ripples of relaxation going down, down, down. And she literally said, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, who said that? like meditation, that's right. <laughs> um, it was a little alarming, but I did end up falling asleep because I masturbated first, uh, which <laughs> it accomplished its goal, which was fun. Um, anyways, we've got a really good show for y'all tonight. We, I want to thank Comedy Wham putting this on. Comedy Wham is isolation comedy put on by Comedy Wham. And if you don't know, ComedyWham.com is the place to go for all kinds of features about Austin comedy, like podcasts and articles and reviews. Um, and all kinds of stuff like that. So they produce these shows. This is going to be actually our last Tuesday show, but we do have a show this Friday and pretty much every Friday in, the, in quarantine for the foreseeable future. Um, that's the dismal dark timeline we live in, but Isolation <laughs> Comedy is here to make it a little brighter. <laughs> all right, uh, that's it for me. Let's bring out your first comic. This guy uh, is awesome. He used to come to my mic all the time. He is hosting the 12th annual custom bicycle show in September. Um, but the caveat there is only if the world uh, still exists. So if, it <laughs> if it doesn't exist, he won't be hosting it. If he does, check this guy out. Give it up for Jimmy Smoltich, everyone. Woo! <laughs> Oh man, quarantine. It's been so long. It's more like quarantine adult. Am I right? We're getting started on a low note, so it can only go up from there, right? Everybody's having problems with this new little mermaid movie because the mermaid was black. I think that's insane. They should be way more worried about the fact that the mermaid's name is Ariel. <laughs> Not a name for a mermaid, Sebastian. Now that's a name I can get behind for a sea creature. <laughs> so I'm a man. Uh, I like uh, cartoons and uh, comic books too, man. I'm a big fan of comic books. Um, I like uh, the some comic book characters are weird though. There's the Green Arrow. That's a comic book character. Most people don't know about him because he only protects people when they take left turns. Um, <laughs> the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they're my favorite superheroes because they're the only superheroes who have to wear masks so you can tell who they are because those disguises aren't fooling anybody. Raphael's always mad because he has to fight with a gardening tool, the Psy. That's a weird weapon. How are you supposed to fight off the forces of evil when your weapon's named after the sound of disappointment? <laughs> 
Hi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> woo! Hey, I think Viagra missed out by not naming themselves Res, because then you could have a resurrection. <laughs> These are my Easter jokes. Uh, <laughs> I can only use them every other third day. Um, Okie dokie. But you know what? I think that, <laughs> I think that uh, Miracle Whip sounds less like a name for a sandwich spread and more like a video game weapon. That's probably why I could never defeat Dracula as a kid. I didn't find the secret weapon. Cholesterol. You gotta stab him in the heart with trans fats. Those are fats from Transylvania. Um, that joke's a thinker. Sometimes comedians will say that joke's a thinker when jokes don't go very good. I think all jokes can be thinkers if you smoke in the weed. You know what I don't. I'm, uh, hey. I, uh, something weird about me is I'm completely deaf in my left ear, like 100%, because that was what completely means. And um, <laughs> when I was young, my friends were like, you don't look deaf. And um, that was weird. And uh, they'd be like, let me scream in your ear to see if you're actually deaf. And uh, that's pretty rude. Um, you know, like, why would I lie about that? Nobody's like, man, did you hear about Jimmy? He's so cool. He's deaf in one ear. I wish I was deaf in one ear so headphones didn't work properly for me either. You know? <laughs> I've been rolling with my wife, though, sometimes. I've been married for a long time. At first, my wife didn't seem to mind when I have to ask her what, you know? Because when somebody's on this side, I can't really hear what they're saying. And uh, at first, she was like, real cool and responded and then she got kind of an attitude after the years went on i'd be like what'd you say and she'd be like what i said was and um now she just gets really angry and i'm like what'd you say and she's like say what again motherfucker <laughs> and uh she's been wearing a suit and carrying around a briefcase a lot more lately i don't know what's going on with her but uh, when i was younger my friends wouldn't believe me that i was deaf in one ear so they'd always want to scream in my my ear and i'd be like yeah go ahead scream in my ear if you want to and then they do it and they'd be like could you hear that and i'm like yeah man because sound goes around things and <laughs> it works. so uh, another thing about me is i'm pretty much blind uh partially at least i'm supposed to wear glasses but i never do when i do comedy because i just like to assume the audience is having a good time um <laughs> that makes a lot more sense when there's an audience <laughs> but I'm not going to rewrite that joke. Uh, anyway, so I'm half deaf and half blind. I feel like I'm half as cool as Helen Keller. <laughs> Except for she graduated college. <laughs> the joke's kind of a thinker. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. So my name's Jimmy Smoltich. Uh, Jimmy Peter Smoltich, actually. My first two names are synonyms for penises because my parents were Catholics and they love penises. They put them on everything. They put them on the statues, the, painting, the paintings on the ceiling. So you look at penises while you pray. They put them on the children. They put penises on a lot of things in that place. <laughs> so, my, my name is Jimmy Peter Smoltich. When I was younger, I was just happy my last name wasn't Cox or Johnson until I found Smoltich means penis in another language. So my name is basically a sausage fest. <laughs> Uh, women wouldn't have that problem because they don't name, nickname their genitals, especially not after things that are real people's names. You never hear a group of ladies being like, man, that guy I went home with last night gave my Tina Turner a real pounding. <laughs> he <couldn't find laughs> really Earhart. He kept trying to put his finger in my Kellyanne Conway. <laughs> that lady's an asshole, you guys. I, sometimes that, so I work with children um, I'm a preschool teacher. <laughs> I really like my job. It's great. Um, the kids say hilarious things. I had a, a birthday recently and they found out I was 37. And when they asked me how old I was, I, I was like, I'm 37. And one of the kids was just like, yikes. <laughs> you know, you're starting to get old when your age scares small children. I <laughs> couldn't even count that high. And I was like, don't worry, little buddy, neither can our president. <laughs> yeah, they say funny things, though, at the school all the time. This one kid was trying to reach for something. And I was like, what do you want? What are you trying to get? And he was like, I want to get high. And I was like, whoa, me too. But I didn't say that because I'm a good teacher. Instead, I said, wait until high school. 
Um, <laughs> some people might say that's weird, but I smoked weed in high school and I passed with flying colors. And by that, I mean, I took a lot of mushrooms too. <laughs> uh, jokes, am I right? Is that what I'm here? <laughs> ah, shit. Oh boy. You know, I wonder if Parkinson's um, sufferers have a hard time going to bars. Like they just go out there and the bartender immediately cuts them off, you know? Because I'm just trying to shake things up. I don't know if this is a good... Hey, one of my favorite games to play is Trivial Pursuit. Or as I like to call it, stand-up comedy. Oh boy. I'm doing jokes on Zoom. Oh, this is Twitch. You guys might be watching from it. I'm watching myself bomb. You know what? Facebook tried to tell me, uh, it was like, hey, we care about your memories. Here's a memory from last year. And then it didn't load the memory, so it was just a blank space. And I was like, oh, Facebook, that's just how I remembered it. <laughs> oh, boy. So, jokes. Am I telling those things here? Oh. Uh, Oh, coming up on time. Thank goodness for that. I was wondering about that. Hey, I think I'm going to start an online Zoom uh, exercise class that I'm going to call Zumba. Is that name? Ah! Is that a thing? Oh, man. Does Smash Brothers sound like a video game or like a gay incest porno? I don't know anymore. What am I doing? Do Vienna sausages look like a can of botched circumcisions? That's not a, how you say that word. <laughs> doing jokes, sort of. Hey, nope. Uh, <laughs> I'm a recovering alcoholic. I'm still recovering from yesterday. I drink a lot. Hey, you know what? Sometimes people say that uh, uh, themed weddings don't last as long as normal weddings, but my friend had an anime themed wedding and he's still happily married to his bed pillow. So I'm doing jokes here, I think. <laughs> And we do it. I'm doing them. Here we are. Thank you. <laughs> oh, all right. We have fun on this show, you guys. We've got a, a great comment coming up next. This guy has a very uh, extensive background in so many things. He's got comedy sketches on StephenAFarmer.com. He actually just put out a feature film on Amazon Prime called Metal Gamer. And he's writing a book, uh, getfarmerfit.com. Go to one of his websites and give it up for your next comic, Stephen Farmer. Yeah, like all that self-promotion, like three things going for me. Now I feel like I have to follow that. Like my credits are better than whatever you're about to hear. <laughs> you white? Look at how fucking white am I right now? Oh my gosh. All right. Yeah, I didn't know how to figure out how the green screen, but I do have a green screen behind me. Um, I got a nice shirt on. I don't have any pants, but I'm halfway this way, halfway that way. I do have shoes on, so we got some good stuff going on. Um, this is great. I like... Uh, I like all the free time quarantine's given us, you know, everybody can uh, work on all these big projects they've been wanting to work on their whole life. You know, that novel they wanted to write, you know, that poetry they wanted to get to, but it just ended up a bunch of adults got TikTok accounts. So I don't know. I feel like quarantine. I don't know. I feel like this epidemic, I feel like we needed it. A lot of people got a lot of free time. I feel sorry for anybody who's getting ghosted right now. They're really not into you. <laughs> Really not. Um, it was weird that I heard that uh, people are attacking um, Asians because of Corona. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Like, do they not realize that's the easiest way to get Corona? Like, why would you do something like that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, my grandma thinks it's all Trump's fault. She keeps uh, messaging me saying it's uh, Trump. I was like, um, I was like, Okay. She's like, you need to get your information. I was like, I don't really watch the news. Like, well, here's where you need to find out. You need to watch Jimmy Kimball and he'll tell you, you mean Jimmy Kimball. Yeah. Jimmy Kimball 
he'll tell you all about what Trump's got going on. It's like, okay, I'll watch the guy who used to co-host the main show for my news. Sounds good. Yeah, but uh, I like what's going on. Um, I train, I do personal training and I have my own garage gym. So I'm just kind of running a speakeasy gym over here. Like if you know somebody that knows somebody, I can let you into my garage and work out. It's really nice. <laughs> I like my gym because I don't like public gyms. You see people doing stuff you don't want to see. I, there's guys who walk in in flip flops in the gym. I don't want to see a guy in flip flops ever, let alone in a gym. That's like my safe space and they're invading it. So that's what I love about having my own gym right now. But yeah, that's just some new stuff I was working on and it all bombed. Let me try out uh, my old stuff that always, because I have all those credits. I don't want to seem like a piece of shit after three things just got plugged. Um, what's going on? Um, I don't know. I was supposed to go to the UK and that trip got canceled. Um, I like, I like traveling. I went to Germany recently because everybody keeps telling me that uh, I look like a Nazi. So I went out there and checked it out. And um, I, don't, I don't like people tell me that. I'm like, why would you tell me I look like that? You know, there's like gotta be a nicer way to say that. Like I look German or I look like the master race, you know, that's not a nice thing to say, Nazi, but whatever. And uh, went out there. It was pretty nice. I liked it. People don't talk to you. I love it. I go out here walking my dogs. Everybody wants to talk to me. Like, don't talk to me. Like, everybody's hanging out in their front yard out here during Corona. Like, they, people have cots in their front yard. Like, you want to relax while strangers can walk by you and stare at you. It's weird. So, nobody talks out there. I like it. But they always have opinions about Americans because, you know, everybody does. Like, they can not believe I'm American. Like, I can't believe you're American. I'm like, why is that? Like, you're not fat. I'm like, okay. <laughs> You believe you're German, you suck at small talk. I met you two minutes ago coming at me with strong opinions. All right, this one's good. But um, yeah, you guys, uh, the German language is the worst language. That's why they love American. It's the worst stuff. <laughs> it's the worst, man. Like at first it, it seems okay. Cause you're like, how do you say beer? Beer. It's like, okay, that's not too bad. You say hair, hair. I was like, I think I can get this down by the end of the week. How do you say uh, hospital? Das Krakenhaus. I'm like, well, crack house, what the fuck? It was like way too aggressive, too many silly. Where they come from? So yeah, I don't like that place. In some regards, um, I met Austrians. Apparently, that's different than being German. They kept telling me how different it was. You know, like it, they're like this, we're like this, we do this, we do this. Like I, I don't really care. You guys are basically the Canada of Germany, right? It's very beautiful, but not important. You know, do we, you guys got like Sound of Music two happening anytime soon? No. Okay, shut up. Doesn't really matter. But yeah, down here during Corona, dude, you get to catch up on stuff. Like, um, I'm trying to catch up on video games because I'm so lazy. I don't even play video games anymore. I had to put it on my to-do list. I'm like, okay, September is going to be Skyrim DLC. I'm going to do this. You know, I got like a bucket list of video games I want to play. It's just weird being in my 30s. I'd rather just watch somebody play games. You know, I read a book. I read Dune, the book. It's got a bunch of sandworms in it and stuff. It seemed like it was pretty good. It was really long, and it was so I feel like I was smarter by reading it. I don't know if I learned anything, but it was so long I feel smart after reading it. I watched Dirty Harry the movie for the first time. That was pretty good. He had like a really big gun, and um, yeah. But I, I'm scared to like try out a lot of new stuff because they say, "Oh, Corona you got a lot of free time," but like I don't want to try out a lot of new stuff. Because what if you end up liking something you're embarrassed about? Like I was letting Pandora play the other day and Kiss started coming on. And I was like, I think I really like Kiss. I don't know how I feel about that. Like if I start watching a lot of TV, like I might end up liking Buffy the Vampire Slayer or something. I don't want that to happen. I don't want to try a lot of new stuff. So I'm keeping away from a lot of that. What am I doing? Uh, yeah, just doing the training stuff. Yeah, at the gym, I didn't like it because there's a lot of steroid guys out there. You know, like guys who are like 35, look like they're 55, like they age really quickly. And um, they got the big forehead and they come up to me and they're like, hey, man, you ever thought about taking steroids? I was like, it's like I thought, I thought you're going to ask me if I was on steroids. I thought I was like working out pretty hard. I was like, no, I'm not going to take steroids. He's like, why not? I was like, dude, it's going to shrink my penis. He said, no, 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 shrink your balls, which will make your penis look bigger. I was like, that's the best anything I've ever done. <laughs> I'm going to try that. It's like, this guy's the best. This guy's an ultimate spin doctor. He makes everything sound amazing. Like, <laughs> he'd be like, oh man, I'm, I'm feeling kind of down. My grandparents just died. It's like, hey, that's cool. Now you can date black girls. I was like, well, I never thought about it like that, man. <laughs> awesome. 
so many things. Yeah, that's what happens when I do my stuff that actually works. Um, yeah, so uh, the dating thing, I'm, sure, I'm, not, I'm not good at that. I know because I'm still dating. It's usually a pretty good indicator you're not good at it. You know, 30, every one of my friends has four kids and I haven't lasted like four months in a relationship. So it's a pretty good indicator. But uh, I don't know. I, I try to date tall girls because I have like a high guilt complex. And I feel like, like I like short girls, but I feel guilty about dating short girls because I feel like I'm stealing from the short guys. Like I'm messing up the short guy food supply. Like I'm messing up their ecosystem. So I pretty date tall, but uh, I don't know. Some of them can just because they're tall, you know, they're like some are uncoordinated. And I don't know. They're like some weird stuff. Like I dated this one tall girl. Like her hands were as big as my hands. Her feet were bigger than my feet. Her penis. I didn't want to get into it. Like, it's like <laughs> emasculating, you know. I'm, and I'm super competitive, which was also a problem. <laughs> You know, so I don't know. I work on that, but yeah, I'm originally from Arkansas. I don't have much of an accent. Um, I guess because I had a TV, so I know what normal people sounded like. So I try to make that, but I have a little bit in there. But uh, people say like I make fun of Arkansas. It's like, oh, well, don't you, don't you get, don't you miss Arkansas? Don't you get homesick? I was like, it's like yeah, every now and then I can just go to a Walmart and knock that out. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like eight hour drive. I don't feel like doing all that. And uh, am, I, am I running out of time? Is this a minute left? Okay. Okay. I'll end right here. Um, well, my big closer. Hey, this is okay. Uh, I, was a, I was a theater major in uh, Arkansas because I was trying to not fit in as much as possible. So I went over there and did that. And I liked it because I got a full page scholarship. I'm not saying that I was great. It's just I was in Arkansas, a place surrounded by cow pastures. It wasn't top, you know. I was pretty much got a scholarship because I was the only guy who could do Shakespeare without a southern accent. You know, it's like, Hark, wet light beyond yonder window breaks, y'all. No, no, it's too much, bitch. I don't know if that falls iambic pentameter, but okay. I'm not exactly Shakespeare Park, but maybe Shakespeare in the trailer park, whatever. Okay. I guess that's a minute, whatever. Be free. Stephen Farmer, you guys, you may not have seen his abs, but he talked about them enough, so you know they're there. <laughs> uh, all right, we've got a bunch of uh, other amazing comics coming up, you guys. Um, this next guy is very funny. Uh, he has also recently made sourdough. Uh, last year, he was an FBA funny person in Austin finalist, um, and he's got a great beard. So let's give it up for Carlos Morrison, you guys. Woo! Woo! What's up, uh, guys? It's cool to be back in the comedy scene. Um, I gotta say, Stephen, I really felt your set. I was relating to it hard because I'm a huge gym rat, and uh, it's been hard on me, you know. And, but I, you know, I've just been trying to keep busy, uh, pumping iron, you know, and uh, keeping it. You know, I mean, it's like I'm making some gains, you know. It's been pretty <laughs> good. Um, you know, on, I mean, I know I actually I've been making a lot of excuses my whole life. You know, I don't I didn't want to work out because, you know, I don't have time or whatever. And uh, now here we are and I'm fatter than ever. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. The health, I'll, I'll, the, my set's mostly going to be about my physical health and my mental health. I, you know, physically 
uh, you know, I haven't gotten the virus yet, but I, I think I, I have stumbled upon a disease that I've uh, named Constaria. <laughs> it's like where you start off constipated and, you know, it, I, I had this one that was so big. It was like, I don't know. I think scientifically it had to have been sideways <laughs> to, to, to have made sense. But uh, the constaria, basically you start off and it's hard to push it out. And then uh, it's, you know, it's like a rock. And then once it breaks loose, it breaks loose. Um, and it gets real runny and wet, but uh, and having that, I've had toxic farts. I think I gave my girlfriend sleep apnea. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I mean, we got a humidifier and the combination is just, you know, it's the Amazon. We're starting to speak Portuguese. Um, <laughs> deep, stinky farts. Uh, and I feel ashamed of this. I got embarrassed because um, I, I ordered some some food. Um, I think it was uh, Vietnamese food. And then I ate it and I was like, well, I want some more. That wasn't enough. So I ordered another from a different restaurant. It was uh, uh, Venezuelan. And then they showed up and I started, you know, I was happy. So I started singing a little song. <laughs> that I wrote or, you know, I was at the door and I was like, fatty, fatty, yum, yum time, fatty, fatty, <laughs> yum, yum time. And then I opened the door and, you know, it was one of those guys that like waits at the door still. He didn't drop it off and then leave. He was like waiting there to say hi. So he heard me sing that and he was like, oh, are you Carlos? And I was like, yeah, uh, that's me. Remember my face. Uh, for shaming um got my oh i got my bike stolen and uh i was pissed but it, it changed my lifestyle like almost not at all uh i wasn't like oh fuck what am i gonna do you know just gone this this schmuck has to work out now um my dog got his uh his balls clipped he's over there He's uh, <laughs> he's... <laughs> I don't know. We didn't have to, but I said, uh, you know, let's let's cut his nuts off. Uh, <laughs> they made us do it, uh, but we we had to cut his balls off uh, to adopt him. So we we got him. He's he's real cute. He's all he's all drugged out. So I tried to get, get on his level, um, smoke some. Beer. <laughs> Um, but apart from that, I mean, still, you know, I can't fit into pants, uh, effectively, uh, which has been, oh, here, he's got his cone now. Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, he's Oh, he's not, he's not. <laughs> oh, buddy, he's all wobbly. It's okay. Oh. All right. Well, um, man, doing stand up comedy, sitting down pretty good, huh? Uh, I, you know, I enjoy this. I think I have, like, my main thing I have always disliked about stand up. Uh, one, I don't like being around people. Um, and then number two is the laughter is just, you know, it just keeps coming. <laughs> and it's like, please, can you just stop? stop? You know, I need to get through this and you guys keep laughing. At my folks. So, I mean, I, it's kind of refreshing um, to just be here in my living room with my uh, my drugged out dog and my half naked girlfriend. Um, but all right. In that way, I guess that's five minutes. I did it. Um, I'll, end on, I'll end on a high note. You know, that was, I think, you know, the best set I've had in months. So good. All right.
Very nice to, uh, to see you all. Yum yum time, fatty, fatty, yum yum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carlitos, give it up for Carlos, you guys. <laughs> he got a girlfriend, he made sure to brag about it and her lack of pants. <laughs> um, it's really nice for you. We're very happy for you, but fuck you. Uh, <laughs> we've got a few more comments coming up. This next guy is a badass. He has opened up for Hannibal Burris, and you've also seen him uh, on Vice somewhere. Uh, give it up for Brandon Philly, y'all. Hey, what's up? What's going on, everybody? Um, if it looks like I'm in an insane asylum, uh, it's because I am. Uh, it's called Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, um, man, today actually has been a crazy day for me. Um, where I work, a guy came to my store and he was like pissed off. He was like, uh, hey, man, I came up here to get the, the COVID-19 testing. I want to get my testing done. And I was like, sir, this is Verizon. Uh, we don't do testing and I'm not a doctor. And he was still angry after I told him that. And I was like, well, I mean, if you want me to stick a Q-tip in your brain, I'll do it. No problem. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, man, it's been like, if anything, coronavirus has made me realize how stupid people are. Uh, and, uh, it's really funny. Um, being that I'm from like this state, it, it, like I run into a lot of crazy shit. Like, uh, I don't hate Mississippi. It's just that we don't change shit. Like recently we named the Bible, our state book. And that's not like a bad answer. It's just an easy, <laughs> answer. um, like it's the same answer. I've seen like a meth head, single mother of four having her OK Cupid profile as a favorite book to read. <laughs> Don't ask me why I was trying to hit up a meth head with single mother of four OK Cupid. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, was a, it was a bad time in my life. All right? But uh, no, I guess it's fine because a meth head single mother of four is also Mississippi State bird. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like, yeah, man, it's just, it's just crazy shit I go through here. Um, uh, like, you know, everybody knows about our state flag. Like, if you've never seen our state flag, you can Google it. It still has, like, the stars and bars from the Confederate flag on it. And to me, it's like, I don't want to see that shit in a public place. Like, I want it to change. Like, you can keep it at your house. Because if you keep it at your house then it lets me know who not to fuck with, you know? <laughs> like, just as a scenario, I'll give you. Let's just say I'm like, I'm like lost in the woods, you know? Uh, I don't know why I'm out there, but I was just out there and I got lost. And just to spice it up a little bit, let's say a fucking werewolf was chasing me. Like, okay, I'm out in the woods, a werewolf is chasing me. And I see a house in the distance and I run in that house, I knock on the door and you open the door and you have these loving arms. You're like, come on in, brother, come on in. But behind you, I see a big ass like Confederate flag. You're like, nah, man, nah, I'm going to go fuck with this wolf man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's, it's a little bit safer, you know. Um, <laughs> But yeah, man, like uh personally I've been dealing with like a lot of racism my whole life. Like uh it started at a very young age. Like uh growing up, um 
I, I, I didn't meet my dad. Like I didn't know who my dad was. And my mom told me the story. She was like, uh, baby, your father, he like, he saw you for the first time. And once he saw you, he was like, that baby's not mine. That baby is too white. And I was like, what? Me? Too white? And uh, it turns out the only thing my mom showed him was the ultrasound. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, uh, I got to go. So, <laughs> fellas, if you need an excuse, uh, <laughs> I think that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, nah, man, like, I don't know. It's just like, Racism has just been like a big part of who I am and like having to deal with it. And uh, I'm trying to stop it. Like I'm trying to figure out a way to stop racism. Uh, so I've been doing my own research. And the research I've done is I went on YouTube, right? Uh, and I typed in white dude. And the first two entries I got were white dudes rapping and white dudes dancing. I was like, oh shit, okay, they're doing that a lot. That's cool, that's cool. <laughs> I typed in black dude, and I got black dude TikToks. And the second entry was black dudes reacting to magic tricks. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I watched the videos for like two hours or whatever. <laughs> And all the videos are like these white guys like reacting to <laughs> black people who react to magic tricks and the white guys are like laughing and uh, the black people are just like running away after they see the magic trick. I'm like, what the fuck are you laughing about? This is how you're supposed to act when a fucking sorcerer comes to the hood. <laughs> Where's my father? <laughs> 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 uh, but that's all my time, y'all. God, sorcerers everywhere, you guys. Okay, give it up for Brandon one more time. If you like stuff, if you liked anyone's stuff, you can uh, donate to them directly. There's going to be Venmos. That would be really nice. Or you can donate to uh, the show on PayPal, and we uh, evenly split that up amongst everyone because we are kind and friendly socialists that share every dollar we get. <laughs> We've got about one, two, three, four, five more comics tonight. Uh, this next gal, very funny, very glamorous. Her name is Kim Luke. She is a high-functioning emotional wreck, currently living in Santa Cruz, California. Uh, she's normally referred to as that lady from that thing. Uh, you can let her know what you had for dinner. You can do that in the comments, or you can DM her. Or, you know what, I think she'd even probably like that in the memo of a Venmo. So let her know what you had for dinner. She is out of ideas. Give it up for Kim Luke, you guys. Kim, I'm so happy to be here tonight as the token glam median. If that's a new term for you, this can be a learning moment. It means I'm kind of glamorous and I'm kind of a comedian. <laughs> uh, but please don't pigeonhole me because it's really possible to be two things at once. For instance, smart, super hot. It's a burden, but it works. Um, I mostly work as an MC, so a lot of what I do is crowd work, and it's been kind of hard for me to keep my chops up because I'm um, sheltering in place with just one person, and um, that's my daughter, but I've been really doing my best. Um, it, um, how are we doing tonight? <laughs> She's doing good. She's doing yeah. great. Um, where are you from? <laughs> she's, from, she's from here. So. <laughs> Me too. Uh, who are you here with? She's here with me. Um, 
<laughs> uh, are there any birthdays or anniversary? No, I I know when your birthday. There's not. There hasn't been. For like, I know. No, don't. We're fine, honey. Everything's fine. Tip your bartender. We'll be here forever. <laughs> um, I keep hearing about people having crazy quarantine dreams, and maybe you're like me. My dreams are just the same as they were before, and they fall into two categories. And the first is you um, accidentally don't wear pants and you're terrified that someone will notice. And then there's the other kind of dream where you purposely don't wear pants and you're terrified that no one will notice. Oh. And it, <laughs> don't say, oh, that's not <laughs> sad, that's sexy. <laughs> it's not sexy, it's horrifying. Um, I pinched myself in a dream last night to see if I was awake or not, and it really fucking hurt. So I think what that means is that I can't be trusted awake or asleep. <laughs> like a lot of people, some of you have talked about this already. My regular day-to-day -day life has turned into like FaceTime life or Zoom life. So I end up, you know, dressing from the waist up, right? And I'm shaving from the waist down because it's all about being camera ready. Am I right? <laughs> I'm just going to keep telling that joke until somebody slides into my DMs. <laughs> I'm single <laughs> while I'm sheltering. So that means that I'm using every single one of my phone apps as a dating app. <laughs> and I'm having a really sexy conversation with a guy on Words with Friends. <laughs> Where did I go? <laughs> oh, I know what I did. <laughs> How scary. Um, anyway, we're having a really <laughs> we're having a really sexy conversation on words with friends. We've got really big words. Um, but I really like the guy I met on Zillow. He's sort of a mid-century modern ranch kind of guy. <laughs> but he's got a detached garage. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I like online dating, kind of, because when you're messaging people, you can sort of try out things that you normally wouldn't say, like in a million years, and see, you know, how it feels. Like, um, okay, like this one. Oh, that mud run looks super fun. <laughs> or another one, maybe. I also like to conquer the outdoors. That just, it doesn't feel right. But my favorite one is, ooh, Bitcoin, how cool. <laughs> That's a Silicon Valley joke. Um, dating me is like physical therapy. I'll, I'll tell you how. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to expect some stretching. There will be some, you know, isolation and some gentle manipulation. And also the out of pocket is going to be way higher than you anticipated. And it won't be any good unless you do it three times a week. Uh, so I appreciate us all being here together. And I know that there's a lot of things out there to help you get through what we're going through. But I want to share something that's been really helpful for me in my industry. I know you're familiar with the pain scale at the doctor, you know, from to like how you're feeling. Well, here's something that's really visual that you can use uh, that'll let you know how you're doing. Now, can you see what I've shared here? I hope you can see this. <laughs> to the left, what you're starting with here is this is the Ben Franklin Britney Spears letter, <laughs> which is clearly it's a cry for help. Uh, like, please let's do a wellness check now. Uh, if you don't <laughs> from that, I think in today's vernacular, this is the Karen level. That means you know you're pissed as hell. You want to talk to anyone who's in charge of this shit show we're all going through. When you get right here up into the middle, this is this is where a lot of us are at right now. <laughs> you're, you're sick and tired of playing by the rules. So you're just going to try something new and different and maybe a little bit dangerous. Now, this has a lot of looks and a lot of outcomes, so be careful out there. Now, right here, this is, you're on, you're, you're moving up. This level is sort of uh, 
perseverance, acceptance, kind of an optimism for the future. Like when this is over, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to get a new job as a receptionist. And then of course, over here on our far right, where we all want to be eventually, and that is Dolly Parton. <laughs> what what that level is is I'm amazing everything's perfect I love you you love me forever and ever so uh, let's all strive to be Dolly and not for Ben Franklin all right um, that's pretty much my time so I think I'm out thanks comedy wham. <laughs>
in a really weird way. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> you guys know vegetarians. You guys think vegetarians are healthy, right? Really healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not, though. I actually gained some weight recently. Ow! Yeah, I gained some weight recently for eating Taco Bell too much. You guys know Taco Bell? Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And it sucks going to Taco Bell in Texas because, like, at every Taco Bell, you can see a good Mexican restaurant. The only problem is, the only problem is, you have to get out of your car at those restaurants. <laughs> and you motherfuckers know I'm listening to a podcast! Come on! <laughs> I live by Taco Bell. Yeah, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OJ <Woo>. Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> we, we all know him. <laughs> I, think, I think I figured out the murder. I think O.J. Simpson just thought the game "fuck Mary kill" was something you were supposed to do to one person. <laughs> 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 I'm going there. I'm doing it. I'm going there. Oh, I'm getting recorded. Oh, I'm getting recorded. Huh? Did I get the horn yet? <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm close. Uh, There's some more jokes. Uh, let's see. Guys, I think dates should be called blow jobbing. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are jobbing. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. We all know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. uh, <laughs> Let's see, what are the short notes do I have? Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> oh, my dick, everybody. Um, anyways, that's me. I'm Glenn. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. Uh, I'm done now. Three, two, one, right? Give me a round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I love comedy. This makes this fun. Very fun. Uh, we've got one more comic. We're coming to the end of the show, y'all. Uh, she is freaking awesome. You're going to love her. She's not in uh, Glenn's living room, but she has opened for some comics like Rory Albanese and Pete Holmes and co hosts this motivational comedy podcast called Hot Buns. Give it up for Sarah Benson. Woo! Oh. Okay, hi you guys. First of all, great job everybody. This has been so fun. What a wild and wacky hour and a half this has been. Oh my God. <laughs> the little macaroni and cheese break in the middle. Yeah, I can't do that in a regular comedy show. No, 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 no. Um, you guys, I just have not been feeling jokes lately. Um, so instead of writing jokes, I thought I would do something a little bit more useful uh, and do a little presentation about finding new hobbies. Oh, finding new hobbies. Comedy is gone, so this is what we've got to do. Um, so I came up with a couple little ideas for finding new hobbies. Um, okay, hobby number one. Puzzles. 
Um, I have been working on a puzzle. Uh, it's going pretty well. I have, are you guys puzzle fans out there? Do we have any puzzlers? We got one, Gabby's a big old puzzler. Love that. Um, I find puzzles very, very thrilling. I have this 1000 piece puzzle. Um, and what I've been doing is I've been sorting all the pieces and putting them in bags and then waiting two weeks. And then maybe in a couple weeks, I'll try again. But puzzles are tough. So we just have them in bags right now. We just got all the tree pieces, uh, all the picnic pieces. All the water pieces. Oh my goodness. What's going to be next? What's going to be next? Oh, we got the sky pieces. Oh, that one's going to be a tough section. That one is going to take a while. Okay, you guys. Oh, I don't know my neighbors, but they know me. <laughs> this is fun. Okay. Um, oh, number two. This has actually been one of my favorite things to do in quarantine. Um, making crafts out of trash oh yeah you guys i know you wouldn't think but these these pieces of paper they're actually the inside of grocery bags <laughs> um, so it's called upcycling yeah oh also guys this probably isn't going to take six minutes this is probably going to take more like two to three um, <laughs> <laughs> that's just the way it is that's just how we're feeling tonight um oh number three this is actually this is actually i think my favorite quarantine hobby um taking long showers oh it's like a little time jump uh do you ever just find yourself thinking man I just want to feel something today uh, because I do. And that's typically when I take a shower. That's uh, that's what I do. It's very nice, very relaxing, good for your skin. Um, ooh, number four. Wow, this is probably going to take like another minute. So brace yourselves for the grand finale of this show. Here goes. Number four, um, sitting alone with your <laughs> it's one of my personal favorite activities for whatever reason i don't really get bored i can just sit i can just sit and think about all the things going on in the world um and it's great it is very grim very grim do we have anybody out there who likes to sit along with their thoughts <laughs> we got we got gabby we got jim with his dog we got uh all the kitchen people are gone now <laughs> um, this is going well this is going well cool we still have kim and brandon carlos he's muted he's he's playing music in the background love it love it okay cool sitting alone with my thoughts got a lot of alone time um we got two more two more two more real good ones um next one watching your food cook in the microwave <laughs> um, my favorite thing to do while whatever i'm making is cooking in the microwave is eating a little snack um eating a little snack while you're waiting for your food to cook <laughs> great thing great thing <sighs> guys okay we got one more we got one more and then we're out of here are you guys ready we got a head nod we got one so we got two head nods oh that's how we know that the audience is nice and warm, nice and warm, just like you stepped out of a good hot shower. Love it. Okay, last one, last one. It's a little joke, little joke, little joke. <laughs> kidding, you guys. Everybody, wait. <laughs> okay, that's my time. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you. Give it up for Sarah and her puzzles. That's the most like OCD depressive activity I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> like, getting ready, but it's gonna be hard, but I'm gonna be ready. Uh, <laughs> that's great. I love that. Um, I'm gonna do that with my diamond painting activities that I got in the mail yesterday. Um, all right, that is the end of our show, you guys. We I hope y'all had a great time. I did my like 
cheeks hurt from laughing and smiling, which is weird when you're home by yourself. <laughs> Thank you to all of our kick-ass comics. If you were here, if you were in the chat, uh, tell your friends to join us. Follow Comedy Wham for all the upcoming shows. Thank you to Drone Rivers, a.k.a. Derek Call the Cops with for his music. Thank you, Richard, the voice from God, making all this technology happen. Thank you to Valerie and Laura for all that they do behind the scenes that y'all don't know about, but it happens, definitely. Um, if you guys had fun, if you enjoyed this, go ahead and let us know in monetary form in PayPal. That would be nice. Uh, it'll be split up amongst the people. Um, if not, you know, just... A kind, direct message really goes very far. Uh, that would be cool, too. You can give someone a compliment. That costs zero dollars. Um, and maybe it'll give Sarah the, co the confidence to uh, start her puzzle tomorrow. So, yeah, that's our show. I hope you all had fun. I definitely did. We'll see you on Friday for the next show. Bye. Bye.